Hey guys, welcome to the fifth case recap of the K-drama extraordinary attorney Wu. With a plus spoiler alert, let's get to it. Du Yang, a sale director of the ATM machine manufacturing company named Dewa, presents their newly advanced ATM machine to a group of bank executives. After his presentation, the bank executives remark that a similar technology was introduced to them by another ATM machine manufacturer named Gum Gun. Du Yang argues that the technology is theirs and will be applying for a patent as well. But the bank executives are not interested in it, and because the price of Gum Gun is much cheaper than Ilwa, they decide to sign the contract with Gum Gun. Ilwa goes to Hinbata to file a lawsuit against Gum Gun, since they have copied their technology. Young Wu learns from Su Yan that the case is assigned under her and Min Wu. Even though Min Wu has informed that he will tell Young Wu about the case, he has not done so. Young Wu goes to his office to discuss the case, but she realizes that Min Wu has already started working on the case without getting her involved. Minutes before their meeting with Du Yang, Min Wu hands her the case material, so Young Wu doesn't get enough time to go through it before meeting their client. Jun Ho notices the rest of the members in the meeting, neglecting the presence of Young Wu. Min Wu manages to impress Du Yang. So when they exchange business cards, Du Yang only accepts Min Wu's and not Young Wu's. Min Wu even makes Du Yang agree to share all the information on the case with him. He shows off by explaining technical terms regarding an ATM machine, as Young Wu struggles to work through them. After the meeting ended, Young Wu requested Min Wu to share information with her, since she had a hard time at the meeting because she was not prepared. Min Wu refuses to do so by pointing out that they themselves are competitors. Since they both are on a contract basis, to get their contract renewed, they need to show good performance. During the trial, the attorney of Jin Zhang, who is Gum Gun's CEO, points out that the technology is an open source technology that was presented in an exhibition, but Ilwa claims the technology to be theirs and applied for utility rights so that other companies can use it. But Young Wu interrupts and points out that even though the two technologies seem to be alike, the technology of Ilwa's security device has more segmented sensors than the open source design, even though it might not be enough to apply for a patent. Jin Zhang explains that those segments are just modifications to adopt the technology for Korean bills, since it was originally made for American bills. Du Yong claims that he nor anyone from their company has ever attended that exhibition. Jin Zhang also adds that an ATM manufacturer named Leo's ATM is the first to use the technology, but with Ilwa's influence, the company has gone bankrupt. After the trial, Yang Wu asks Du Yong if he really used the open source technology. Du Yong slides from the question to answer a phone call. Min Wu advises Yang Wu that she shouldn't be questioning the client's honesty, since it would cause damage not only to Yang Wu, but Min Wu as well. They find Du Yong and Jin Zhang fighting outside the courtroom. Min Wu teases her for not being able to figure out who is lying and who is not. Later that day, Young Wu meets with Jirami and tells her about her difficulties to tell if someone is lying or not. Jirami has given her books to refer to human body language to detect lying. She also gives her advice on how to detect a lying person. Jirami then makes statements and asks Young Wu to tell if she's lying or not. One of those statements is Jun Ho is interested in Young Wu. Min Wu gets a call from Mong Sak as he plays basketball with Jun Ho. Jun Ho overhears Min Wu bragging about him having to do most of the work because Young Wu is autistic. Jun Ho gets offended by it. So when they play after the call he makes sure to strike Min Wu hard and walks away from the game. The next day, Jun Ho also gives Young Wu advice on how to detect a lying person, as he drives her to meet Du Yong. Jun Ho offers to help her practice before meeting Du Yong, and asks her to guess if Jun Ho is lying or not. Young Wu makes the same statement Jirami made, that is if Jun Ho is interested in Young Wu. Jun Ho goes speechless on hearing the statement. Jun Ho just tells her that it is a difficult question for Du Yong. In the meantime, Min Wu meets with an ex-employee of the leader's ATM company. The ex-employee confirms that Ilwa has adopted an open-source technology. He also confirms that there are no leaders ATM products available ever since they went bankrupt. When Jun Ho and Young Wu get to Du Yong's office, they find Du Yong seriously injured. Du Yong tells them that he was in a car accident. Du Yong takes them to Song Chiel, who the person in charge of the development of the ATM machine, since they have questions about the ATM machine. When she asks Song Chiel about the production process, Young Wu realizes that he is lying by noticing the sign Jirami and Jun Ho taught her to look for. As she questions him Du Yong gets a call from Min Wu, confirming that all of Leader's ATM machines have been disposed of. Young Wu points out that it would be beneficial for the trial if Song Chiu testifies as a witness. Because she is already aware that Song Chiu is lying, she advises him on how to testify in court to make it look as if he's not lying. With Young Wu's advice, Song Chiu manages to convince everyone in the court that the technology was not copied. Young Wu who is aware of the truth, seems to be disappointed to see Song Chiu lying. The next day, Du Yong arrives with a painting as a gift for Young Wu, since the court has banned all of Gum Gun's products. Du Yong removes the attorney's code of ethic which Young Wu has hung on the wall, and replace it with the painting he has gifted her, since the painting symbolizes wealth. Young Wu receives a letter from Jin Zhang. He tells her that Ilwa is monopolizing a technology that is open source. With a ban on sales, Gum Gun is likely to go out of business. 
Their clients are demanding explanations as well. He asks her if she wants to prove herself as a competent attorney who only wins in court, or as an honorable attorney who respects the truth. She goes to Mung Sok first with a letter. Because he's not in his office, she goes to Min Woo with it. Min Woo gets offended for not receiving a letter as Young Woo did. He scoffs at her when she tells him that they should use the letter to convince Ilwa to tell the truth. Min Woo brings up the fact that Young Woo herself taught Song Chiu to lie in the court. Heartfully Young Woo returns to her room and places the letter inside her drawer. Later Min Woo informs Young Woo that Gum Gun has filed an appeal against the court's decision. Jin Jong has managed to find an ATM, manufactured by Leader's ATM in the countryside, and so they have called in for an on-site inspection. Jin Jong's attorney manages to prove that the Leader's ATM has been manufactured earlier than Ilwa, and that the technology in Ilwa is exactly the same as in the Leader's ATM. So the ban against Gum Gun gets lifted. Do Yong seemed unaffected by the change of verdict, since he has already managed to take over all the customers of Gum Gun during the period of the ban. Young Woo gets more hurt when she realizes that Do Yong's plan this entire time was not to win the trial, but to get the ban against Gum Gun until he could take over their clients. Back in the office, Young Woo takes down the painting Do Yong gifted her and replaces it with the letter Jin Jong wrote to her. We then see an administrator going to see Sumi. Apparently, Sumi has become a candidate for the Ministry of Justice. As they talk, the administrator asks about the rumor of Sumi having an illegitimate child. Sumi denies the claim and assures him that there is no such child. With that, the episode ends. Thank you so much for joining in. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again.